God bless you, YouTube and Facebook. How you doing? It's a Wednesday afternoon, 5.30 on time. And as always, me and my wife, I can take out the time to say thank you for supporting this ministry. This is called Divine Insight Ministries. We come on Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, 5.30 Central Standard Time, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Welcome. If this is your first time, this ministry is out of New Orleans. God bless you. And as always, we appreciate all that you do. Good to see you, Captain Forrest. I uh, may try to call you sometime today to see how you're doing. God bless everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. As always, we have to do a couple things. Uh, hit that share button and go ahead and share this on your page. Please do that. Also, take out some time. Good to see you, Tanya. Go ahead and take out some time and um, invite at least 10 or 15 people. Good to see you, Angela. Invite, invite about 10 or 15 people. I'm telling you, this series this week is going to be phenomenal. I am so excited about it. Good to see you, Bruce. So excited about it. So go ahead and tag about 10 to 15 people. Sister Marine, God bless you. Go ahead and do that. And um, and, and, and just, it's, I'm telling you, we're going to have a good time tonight. Kimberly, God bless you. We will be calling you tomorrow. God bless you. So welcome. Go ahead and hit that share button. Share this on your page. And also tag about 10 to 15 people to come out today because we're going to go over some powerful things. It's going to be great if you are a leader, if you are in pursuit to become a leader, if you run in from being a leader, <laughs> um, just I'm telling you, it's going to be a blessing. Good to see you, Chevelle. God bless you. So we're going to go into some powerful things today. So as always, we thankful. Go ahead and hit that share button. Tag about 10 or 15 people. We're going to get into this word. Let's pray. Father, we bless you for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our life. Thank you, Lord. You have never left us nor forsake us, and we bless you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for connecting us to people who give us a divine word from you and that our life is getting better. We thank you, Lord, that you are purging us and you're constantly cleaning us. And we thank you, Lord, for all things that bring us closer to you and to understand you more. Thank you, Lord, for my marriage. I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in the marriage, even in the ministry. Thank you, Lord, for all the promises that you have over our lives. And as we begin to teach your people, give us wisdom and understanding. Allow us to be challenged until we change. We assign angels to our mind, north, east, south, and west, and God, we bless you for it. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. I'm telling you, I am so excited about what God is doing. Moving into the year of 2019, I'm so excited. I see great things happening. I see a gathering. I see a completion. I see work. I see development. I'm telling you, I'm excited. Good to see you, Chanel. God bless you. So I'm so excited. And this word is going to really help us. We know we're walking through the Bible. We're in the book of Joshua. And I'm dealing with leadership in the book of Joshua. Okay, I'm going to deal with leadership. So a lot of things I'm going to talk about today. Brother Mike, I got to call you, man. God bless you, man. Love you so much. God bless you. And so we're going to move into this in the book of Joshua. So let's turn there first. And let's read verses 1 through 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse through 9. And I'm going to give you a lot of things today. Good to see you, Bailey. God bless you. Okay, and so also when you notice that I sent out a notification that I'm coming on, you know, that day, can you also help me by sharing that on your page? Let's get the advertisement out more that I'll be on. Every day I try to put out a post letting you know that I will be coming on that day. Help me share that on my page as well, okay? It's good to see you, Erica. God bless you. And so it's so important that we do that. Okay, Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Let's get into this word because I'm excited about it. It says, now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, now, I want to read this, and I'm going to give a couple points on each one of these verses, and then I'm going to give you all the points that God has given me. Good to see you, Prophet Charmaine. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So, I want to deal with that, okay? We're dealing with leadership. We're dealing with, there's a shift in leadership. From Moses to Joshua. And I got a lot of things I'm going to tell you about the difference between Moses and Joshua and what God requires from us from both of those leaders and just how to be a leader in God and to see some examples from the scriptures about leadership. Okay. So I want to talk about a lot of things today. So let me talk about each verse. We in verse one. It says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses ministry. We know that Moses has passed. Um, there's a whole lot goes with that. God is now transitioning Joshua to be able to take over the functions or the calling or uh, let's, let's say the responsibility that Moses had 
Now Joshua is in that. And then verse 2 says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give uh, to them, even to the children of Israel. Now let me, let me talk a little bit, because I'm so excited, so I'm going to try to slow down. You'll notice that it says in verse 1, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. Many times we have been under great leadership that their responsibility has expired in our lives. In this case, Moses had actually died for 120 years. He led the children of Israel or he lived 120 years, 40 years with, with Pharaoh, 40 years on the backside of the uh, desert, and then 40 years in ministry. So 120 years. And when he died, he died with his eyes, not weak but strong, which means there was so much in Moses that he could have did, but his time was over. God begins to declare to Joshua that the one that you have admired, the one that you have uh, you have sat under, the one that you have experienced a lot of experience from, he is now dead. It is very important in our life as leaders to get what we're supposed to get from under the people that God has set us under or the people that God has called to mentor us. Because when our time come, and now we are under a dead situation, we got to know how to transition from a dead situation that once was alive, once was wonderful. We've learned a lot from it, but our time has come. And many times you won't move into your time or your turn because you won't accept that that relationship or that establishment or that covenant is over. It's dead. And it, it don't have to be physically dead. It can be dead when it's time for you to move into what God called you. And many times in life, good to see you, Tina. Many times in life, in leadership, we become so faithful and loyal to everybody else's ministry that when it's time for us to move into what God has called us to, we start feeling like we're not qualified. Man, I feel the anointing. We start feeling like that we're not able. And there are things that God wants us to know that when it's time for you to move into what God called you, you have to understand that the reason why you sat under that was for a reason. But if you don't disconnect, if you don't cut the cord, if you don't move on, if you don't accept that it's dead, it's dead, if you don't do that, you'll never move into what's in you. And many people have greatness into themselves, but they can only celebrate somebody else. They don't know how to celebrate themselves. They don't know how to cut off. Even when it comes to marriage, the Adam says to God, or oh God told him, it's not, uh, 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 I must leave mother and father and cleave unto my wife. And you got to know when it's time to leave. You got to know when things are dead. You got to know when is your time to move to the next level. So God is making it clear to Joshua that Moses is dead. And I don't care how well you sat under him, you got to realize that there is something in you. God, I'm talking to somebody. And you got to know how to know what's in you. You can't think that everything great is always in somebody else. You make millions on the job, but when it's time for you to start your own business, you don't think you can do it. Come on, somebody. You raise everybody else's children, but when it comes time for you to be a great parent to your own, you question yourself. You have counseled many people on the phone and it's helped them, but when it's time for you to help yourself and encourage yourself, you start doubting your ability. And this happens a lot of times when we stay under something that God has, has called for us to move. When it's dead, when it's expired, when it's over, if you don't move into that time, you'll never see the fullness in you. This is why a lot of times God will move people away from you. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. He will move people away from you because you got to know when is your time to move. And sometimes if, if God don't move the big bird out the nest, you will never learn how to spread your wings. And sometimes we stay under people too long, especially if these people have become fathers for us. Most people don't know how to lead fathers. If you sit under an apostolic father or apostolic anointing, 
That person always has something fresh to tell you. That person always has something strong to tell you. If you're waiting to learn all you can learn from an apostle, you will never become the apostle or the prophet you need to become in your own life. Because he's a father, he always has some. He gonna die with his eyes strong. He gonna die with more vision in his eyes. But you gotta know when your time comes, whether it's through death, whether it's through separation, whether it's through expire, and whether it's through transition, you gotta be convinced and you gotta know how to let it go. Because if not, you may try to do your ministry like your father, and you're, you're not called to be Moses. You're called to be Joshua. Man, I'm talking already. And you got to know that. So I love the text because God takes out the time and say, Moses died. There's some things that were wonderful for you, but they're dead. There's some things that really blessed you, but they're dead. There's some things that really raised you and trained you and equipped you, but they are dead. Dead, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So, so now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. The second point here is that I don't care how well Moses was to you. I don't care how much he blessed you. I don't care how much he sold into your life. He was my servant. You can't take ownership over people who have blessed you and don't let them go when it's time for you to go. This is very common in homes when the mother don't allow the son to grow up and be a man. You got to know when it's time for him to spread his wings and you got to release him. This is why when a baby is on a mother's breast, when it's time for that baby to transition from the breast to the bottle, the baby starts biting the mother because the baby now has teeth. And you got to know when there are situations that they belong to God. I don't care how much they have helped you and they was there for you when you was on crack. They was there for you when you were struggling with drugs. They was there for you through your first two divorces. They've always been there with you. You got to know that I don't care how much they have been a blessing to you. They belong to God. They don't belong to you. Sometimes we take too much ownership over leadership. Oh my God. And we don't allow it. This is why a lot of people in the church have not transitioned from sheep come on, to sheep, come on, to servants, because we don't know how to leave the shepherd. Uh-oh, I know you don't like that. You've been in church too long, and I'm not talking about leaving as if you disconnect yourself, but you can't stay a sheep. You must go. There are stages to growth in leadership. So when you when you are sheep, you stay under a shepherd. But you got to move to servanthood. Come on. Then you got to move to friendship. Come on. And then you got to move to becoming the bride. Come on. So there's different layers in that. And you got to know how to release them and also know how to let them release you. God is saying you can't keep going the way you're going. You're sending to Moses. But the reality is, is that Moses is dead. Oh, and in, in this text, it is an actual physical death. But there are many times that is dead for them to keep teaching you. You got to move on to a greater level. You got to move on. When you're going to contact the teacher that's in you? Uh oh, when you're going to contact the apostolic calling that's in you? And you got to know that. So we thank God for Moses. We thank God for leadership. But when it's time for you to, to move to a next level, you got to know when. Now, you can't move too early and you can't move too late. Uh oh. You got to know that God makes the announcement when it's time to move. So God says in Joshua chapter one, he says, look here, Moses and he's my servant. Quit acting like they belong to you because they help you. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Quit like they, they belong to you because, because I can't make it without them. They gave me my first Bible. They helped me sing my first song in church. Uh, that's the one who gave me my license. Look, when a baby is born in the hospital, the hospital, after they give birth, give delivery to the baby, the baby got to go home. The place that birthed you is not always a place that raised you. And many times we want to be raised in the place that birthed us. But the place that birthed you is not the place that raised you. You don't get raised in the hospital. That's where you give birth to the baby in the hospital. So you got to know how to transition as a leader. And just because Moses was a great leader, it doesn't mean that you're not a leader as Joshua. Come on, somebody. You got to know how to be under a leader who sees what's in you and know that they train you to be a leader just like God trained you to be a leader. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So he says, look here. He's my servant. He's my servant. He's my servant. He's my servant. 
It came to pass the Lord spoke unto Joshua, and God came to Joshua. This wasn't Joshua getting mad and quitting. This wasn't Joshua getting angry because him and Moses didn't agree. This is God saying that you were next, and I want you to know it's your turn. I want you to know, listen, listen, I have many sons, I have many daughters, I have many people who sit under me, I mentor many people, but my whole job is to get you ready to, to take the baton. My whole job is to raise you and to train you and to educate you and to equip you so that you can deal with the leadership in you. I don't need you to sit under me to, for me to feel like I'm a leader. Uh-oh, I don't need you to get to be a yes person to me to feel like I'm wise. My whole, if I'm not cultivating the leader in you that I am in your life for the wrong reasons. Ooh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So verse two, watch this. Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise. God declare he's dead. There's some things that you were tied to. When you were there, they bless you, but, but it's dead. That thing that was, you used to be a part of is dead. Quit trying to stay connected to a dead thing. It's dead. It's dead. It's dead for a reason. It's dead for a time zone. You, you, you learned some things under it. Don't, don't curse it by, because it's dead. It blessed you, but it's dead. Uh oh, it helped you, but it did. It so life, it so uh, uh, a seed into your life, but it's dead. And when God says it's dead, it's time to move. Uh oh, watch this. God says to, Joseph, to, jo to Joshua, Moses, my servant, he belonged to me. He belonged to me. My servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise. When God lets you know that you can no longer be connected to it because it's dead, you got to arise from it. Don't, don't say God told me it was dead, but you stayed there. The matter's been dead, but you stayed there. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you got to learn how to leave bad ground, but you also got to learn how to leave good ground. Some of us can't leave good ground. Just because it's good to you don't mean you're supposed to be in it for the rest of your life. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Okay, very key. Okay, you gotta learn how to leave good ground and bad ground. Cause some stuff is time for you to leave, not because it's bad, but because your time of training is over. You can't stay in Sunday school for the rest of your life. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So Moses, my servant, is there now. Therefore, arise, and I speak to your spirit. Arise, arise, because death has come to the thing that has helped you. Watch that. Go over this Jordan. You got to finish the task. Many things that you were under. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Many things that you was under. You're going to have to finish it. There's a, there, there's, a, there's a mantle that's on your life that you got to finish some of the things. There are some of the things that your leader taught you that you're going to take it to another level. There are some things that your pastor showed you that you're going to take it to another level. There are some revelations that you received from the prophet, from the evangelist, from your mother, but you're going to take it to another level. You got to cross over Jordan because what I promised Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the responsibility that I gave to Moses, the responsibility is not over because Moses is dead. The responsibility is not over because your daddy is dead. The responsibility is not over because your mama is dead. Oh, your mama was doing an assignment because I assigned her to something. But you got to finish some stuff that mama couldn't finish. Some stuff that daddy couldn't finish. Some stuff that bishop couldn't finish. And you got to know why you were there. You were there not only to help build his ministry, but you also was there to help finish what he was called to do. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You must cross over Jordan. You can't, I know, I know you're missing. I know, I know you wish he was there. I know you, you, you wish you could have got your last goodbyes, but, the, but the, you still got assignment. You can't be wallowing into something because it's dead. I was part of it for 12 years, but it's over. I was part of it for 15 years, but it's over. It's dead. You got to rise and you must cross over over. You got to finish some stuff. I'm telling you, it took me almost 45 years of my life to understand why my daddy was what, who he is, why my grandfather was who he is, because there's some stuff that was in my grandfather that my dad was supposed to finish that God promised my grandfather and then now here I come out of the family as a preacher. Why? Because there's some stuff I got to finish. I got to cross over some stuff. There's some stuff you got to cross over that your bishop did not cross over. There's some stuff you got to cross over that your mother did not cross over. She didn't get past that thing. Oh, he didn't get past that thing. Oh, your pastor didn't get past that thing. But there's some something in you that your pastor have never saw. 
Oh, and some of them saw it, but he had never entered in. Moses saw the promised land, but he couldn't enter in. And there's some things that you're going to cross into that only thing your forefathers saw, only thing your pastor did, they saw it, but they could never get there. They saw this level of a vision. They saw this level of work, but they could not get there. There's some things you got to do. You must cross over. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So cross over. And all the people, not only you, but you got to get all these people. You have a great responsibility, Joshua, because Moses was leading over a million people. You got a responsibility. There's some things that when God release you, you're going to take on responsibility instantly. A, a million people. God didn't train you under that trouble for no reason. You watch your pastor go through some things. You learn what not to do. You learn what not to say so that you can get the people over. You watch him get frustrated. You watch them make mistakes. You watch marriages fall apart. You watch friendships be broken up. You watch prosperity go down to poverty. You watched it. So now you know the responsibility because one of the greatest leaders of all time could not make it. Now it's in your hands. Now it's your turn. You saw churches fall. You saw perversion come in. You got all these messages when you weren't leading what needed to be done. You saw the church was wrong here. We need to do it this way. Well, guess what? Now it's your turn, Joshua. Now it's your turn. You oh, you can call all the plays on the sideline, but now you in the game. Oh, you know when you you know when you watching the football game when, when you sitting on your couch, you always can say run to the right or run to the left. That's because you're not being chased by nobody. But now God has blown the whistle and say it's time for you to get in the game. And all the things you saw from the sideline, let's see if they work. Uh oh, let's see if they work. Your turn to see. Your turn to deal with Jezebel. Your turn to deal with Ahab. Your turn to deal with rebellion. Your turn to deal with stiff-necked people. Oh, your turn to deal with unfaithfulness. Your turn to deal with lack of commitment. Oh, and Joshua, I'm going to be with you like I was with Moses. You're going to get him there. Oh, God. And, e and even though you sat under a great man and a great woman, what you have is so different than what they have. You about to add on to what you saw in them. Woo! It says in every place, watch this. In every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I say it unto Moses. Now watch this. Moses had something in his hand. Joshua had something on his feet. You sat under a hands ministry, but now you're going to be operating from a feet ministry. You must understand that, 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 that Moses knew how to work the, the will of God and the ways of God and the word of God through his hand. He had a rod in his hand. God didn't give you a rod, but wherever you place your feet. You watch how hands work. Now you're going now you're gonna know how feet work. You gotta understand that even though you sat under a great ministry that did great things in their hands, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Listen, listen. I sat under some great people in my life. Some great people in my life. I've seen, I've sat under a pastor in Buffalo, New York, and I'm talking about when it comes to organization, when it comes to know how to organize a church, when it comes to how to come up with programs and, and how to deal with a follow-up. I've watched this man take in 17 to 30 members at his 8 o'clock service and then 45 members at, at, at his 11 o'clock service. I watched him take a church from 300 members to 5,000 members. And so when I said unto him, I seen how he worked his rod, and I seen how how he did it. Then I've been in other churches where they, they rod was, was was prophet and, and they can prophesy and I watched the prophecy work and I learned how to prophesy and learn the speaking in tongues and the language and, and I've been a part of cer certain ministries where they taught me how to lay hands and how to tarry for the Holy Ghost. I sat under those type of Moses. Oh, see you have different leaders that you may sit under to learn different things. Uh oh, watch this. But when it came for God to do what he did in Robert Jenkins, I had the to learn to build upon what they had gave me, but what I had was so different. It was so unique that I had to learn how to see God from my feet and not expect God from my hands. Woo! God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So whatever, every place that the sword of your foot shall tread upon, that I've given to you as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river of Euphrates, of the land of the Hittites, Unto a great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. God gives him, uh, 
the direction of where I'm going to take you. See, in leadership, you got to be able to hear. You got to first got to be able to disconnect in order to move out. Then you got to know how to hear the instruction that God gave you. So many people are not moving into their leadership because you're not being authentic. You're not being authentic. You're trying to act like your father in the ministry. When your father had a rod, you don't have a rod, you got feet. And you can't be like him, even though you're going to build upon what he gave you. You cannot copy him. God did not call you to be a clone. God didn't call you to talk like your pastor, use the same tone your pastor do. You got to realize that the whole purpose of, of, of copying something is so that you can learn how to be authentic. You got to learn how to be authentic. You have to be true to Joshua. Because if you take on the spirit of your father, you also will take on the failure of your father. You have to use your father as an example of what to do and not do, but you have to be authentic to yourself. You have to be you. Come on, somebody. And so God gives him direction for you. This is the way I'm going to take you. This is the way I'm going to take you. And you got to accept the way that God is taking you. I don't care how powerful Bishop T.D. Jakes is. And he's a very powerful preacher. You can't get up and say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. We already been getting ready. For T.D. Jakes' time, we was getting ready. For your time, we may have to be ready. You have to know how to be authentic. Authentic. You're not to be a clone as a leader. You learn how to build upon it. Oh, but there's a uniqueness about you. He gives them direction. Verse 5. There shall, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee in all the days of thy life. Now, God giving him a strong word. Don't tell me you can't do it because God made a promise to you that nobody will be able to stop you. He said, there shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. When God give you a word that I am for you, I am more than a whole world against you. You got to believe in what God say. There's a lot of times that fear will arrest you at the beginning of your transition because you thinking maybe I'm not strong enough. Well, this is not based upon your strength. This is based upon there's a word over your life and the word is nobody will be able to tear it down. Nobody, whatever God bless, nobody can curse. And whatever God curse, nobody can bless. You don't have any excuses to not be the leader that God called you to because God says nobody can stop you. Oh, uh, yes, you have to love yourself. Chanel says, I believe you have to love you also. You must love you. You can't love your neighbor unless you love yourself. You have to love and you have to love the way God designed you. You have to understand that. That's a lot of times when we are under other leaders, we let them shape us into being like them instead of shaping us into be like me. Moses, your job is not to make me a Moses. Your job is to make me confident as a Joshua. You got to make me confident in being who I am. Confident in preaching the way God told me to preach. Confident in being the, the business person or whatever God called you to do. You got to give me confidence to be me. Me, because when you die, I can't do it your way. Uh oh, the anointing is not on what God told you. The anointing is on what God told me. He going to be with me like he was with Moses. But my job is not to be Moses. Oh, my job is not to be Moses. Okay. He said that. Watch this. I'm going to stand before thee in all the days of life. And as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And I will not fail thee, nor for safety. Now watch this. He said, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Now you got to hear this in the spirit. You know why you got to hear this in the spirit? Because God was with Moses and Moses couldn't finish, the, couldn't finish the work. God is saying, I was, I'm going to be with you like I was with Moses. But it wasn't, it, 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 you got to understand that Moses, God, I feel the noise. Moses had a responsibility to be Moses and I'm going to be with him. That don't mean you're going to fail. That means I'm going to be with you. You got to do your part, Joshua, like Moses should have did his part. I was faithful to Moses all the way. Uh-oh, because I'm going to be with you like I was with Moses. Watch this. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong. Don't get strong. Be strong. Leaders, don't, don't get strong. Be strong. You was getting strong when Moses was alive. You got to be strong now that Moses was dead. You was getting strong when you was under that leadership. Now you got to be strong now when you are the leader of the leadership. You were getting strong when you were learning. Now you got to be strong when you're leading. Uh-oh, you're leading now. Be strong. Don't get strong. Be strong. Watch that. And of a good, good courage, you got to be courageous. 
You'll never transition into your, into your responsibility, into your calling, if you don't know how to be courageous. I told you before, the definition of courage, I learned this from uh, Dr. Les Brown. He said, courage is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. Courage! Good to see you, Poppy. Courage is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. He said, Joshua, I want you to be of good courage. I don't care how many times it looked rough, how many times it looked like you're not going to make it, how many times it looked like you went the wrong way. You got to be encouraged that I am with you. Uh-oh, because Moses dead. You don't have no leading post. You can't call your leader. You don't have nobody to, to hold you up. You got to know that I am the one that's going to hold you up. You don't have no more crutches. It's your time. It's your turn. You got to be courageous. Watch this. For unto this people shall thou divide inheritance of the land. You got a responsibility. Much known, much required. You got some land to divide. Watch this. Which I swear unto their fathers to give them. I, the reason why you got to be the man you called to be. Because I'm holding you responsible to bring dreams to pass for other people. God, I feel the anointing. Did you hear that? The reason why you got to be who you called to be. Is because I'm holding you responsible as a leader. To bring other people's dreams to pass. God trusting you with other people's dreams. He's trusting you with other people's deliverance. He's trusting you to bring people besides yourself into a land flowing with milk and honey. You can't waste time crying over Moses, crying over you can't find a church, crying over I raised you enough. I put you under some great things. Your time and your turn has come. Guess what? Because there's some people counting on you. I told them you would get them there. I told them you would pray for them. I told them you would love them to that point. I told them you would sow into their life. I told them you knew the way how to get there. And their dreams is in your hands. Woo! Because I made a promise to them that I was going to do some things for them. And I'm putting you responsible. <laughs> oh my God, my God. Verse 7. Only thou... Be strong. You notice that he don't say do it. We try to do something. You got to learn to be it before you can do it. You got to be holy. You got to be sanctified. You got to be strong. You got to be courageous. You got to be in Christ. Uh oh, you got to be born again. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Very courageous. Very Leadership takes courageous. If you're not willing to walk on a thin line, you're not ready for leadership. Leadership is people who walk on the edge. Oh, knowledge. It's the knowing ledge. It's when you know where the ledge is. Oh, and you know how to walk the ledge. Knowledge, the no ledge. Watch this. You got to be very courageous. There are going to be some things that's going to be challenging, but you got to be courageous. You got to be courageous like David was to Goliath. He's coming down today. When a leader risks his life, he's courageous. I, I believe God called it. I'll step out. I believe it. Yeah, that's courageous for you to know that you're only making 40000 a year, but God said for you to have that building, that's $3 million. Courageous to believe that you can speak to a dead man and he's coming out of a grave. There's some things I'm going to want you to face, and you got to be very, 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 very courageous. That thou may have observed to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, command thee. Turn that from it. Now, I didn't leave you, I didn't leave you hopeless. I left you with the Torah. I made sure before Moses died that the first five books of the Old Testament was written. I made sure that you have something in your hand. Oh, so I'm giving you the Torah in your hand. Moses had a rod in his hand because the Bible had not been written. But now you have the Torah. Don't forget the law. Don't forget the Ten Commandments. Don't forget them because you got them in your hand. And always go back to the book. Uh-oh. Always go back to what I wrote on the hearts. Oh, of the people. He said, you have it. Watch this. Ooh, good to see you. Psalmist Jones, watch this. We in Joshua chapter 1, we in verse 7. Come on, hit that share button and start tagging some people. Watch this. He said, turn not from it. Don't turn from the word of God. You can't be a leader when you come out of that book. When you, when you stop studying, when you stop fasting, when you stop pray, praying, then you know what? You will not be a leader. And let me tell you something. If you say you're a leader and there's nobody following you, you're just taking a walk. If you say you are a leader and there's nobody following you, you're just taking a walk. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. 
Turn that from the right hand or to the left. Don't, you can't lead out of your own opinion. You can't lead out of your own suggestion. You're leading them because you have a guide. Very key. Watch this. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Don't let it come out of your mouth. This book, you got to have it on your tongue. You got to have it in your confession. Shall not, and, and shall, but thou shall meditate day and night. You got to meditate. Leaders who don't spend time in the word, you're misleading people. M leaders who don't spend time in the word, you're being led by a demonic force. Because there's no real God to guide you outside of the word. Ooh, but thou shalt meditate day and night, and that thou may observe to do according all that is written therein. And for then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous. What brings us into prosperity? The word of God brings you into a prosperous life. And thou shalt have good success. You're going to have good success if you stay in the word. You're going to have good success if you stay courageous. You're going to have good success if you be strong. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid. You see how many times he keep reiterating the word be, 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 be strong and of good, good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Wherever thou goest, God has made a vow to you that wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. I've gave you the direction. It's your time. The one who helped you, the one who trained you, the one who was exempted before you, he is dead. I, he, he's my servant. I know he dead, but he belonged to me. I know that was your bishop, but he's my bishop. He's my apostle. Let him go when it's time to let go because you'll never become you holding on to him. You'll never become you holding on to them. You'll never become you holding on to her. You got to know what's in you. Every apple will tell you there's a seed in me. Don't just eat the apple and not plant the seed. Inside of me is the potential to, to bear fruit to a tree, but you got to release what's in me. And you can't stay connected to people past your time because they bragging on you because you're a wonderful apple. You're a faithful apple. You're a red apple. Oh, you're so powerful as an apple. But I don't care how well I'm on this tree. Don't forget there's a seed in me called the Joshua seed. Oh, and if it was in the New Testament, it would be the Timothy because in the Old Testament, you have a Joshua generation. But in the New Testament, you have a Timothy generation. And you can never let nobody because you come out of a moment or you come out of a Paul, despise what's in you as a Joshua or despise what's in you as a Timothy. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost because it's your turn. You got to know it. Why? Because you've been called to leadership and God is the one that made the announcement. My servant is dead. What has God told you that is dead, that, that blessed you, that helped you, that brought you to a certain level, but is dead, and you are living in fear to become when it's your time. You talk so good when you was on the sideline until God said, get in the game. You saw everything wrong until it's time for you to move in what God has in you. You got to be courageous, okay? So I wanted to go over those first nine voices. Now, verses, now let's walk into the points that God gave me, okay? First point, and I kind of talked about them, but we're going to walk through them for the day. First point is, leaders must have at least three things to be a leader. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. At least three things you got to have as a leader. You got to have courage. I want you to take notes. You got to be persistent, point two, and you got to know God's faith in you for others. Three things as a leader. You got to be courageous. You got to have courage. You'll never step out the boat if you don't have courage. Oh, you'll never believe that what's in you. Oh, if you don't have courage, you'll never leap out on faith. Come on. You'll never speak to the mountain. Oh, you got to have courage. Okay. There's some things that God want to give you. But you can't be a coward. Uh oh, a lot of times you disqualify yourself even when your time has come as a leader because you still want to be a coward. Or you're so used to everybody doing it for you that you're not willing to do it for yourself. How do you see greatness in others but can't see greatness in you? How do you see strength in everybody else but don't see strength in yourself? You got to be, you got to have courage. So you got to have courage. You got to be persistent. You got to be persistent. I don't care how much how much it look like you're not going to make it. You got to be persistent. I'm going to keep going. When I first got on Facebook, my wife would tell you, I used to be excited about 20 people. 
20 people would come on. If I get five shares, I would thank God. I remember telling my wife one time, if I can just get 100 people to watch, hallelujah. She said, why don't you put a number on it? Don't put no numbers on it. Don't start counting the numbers. But I didn't know, see? But I had to keep being persistent. You may start your ministry and nobody come the first year. Oh, I know everybody loves to talk about Bishop T.D. Jakes, but go back and study the history of Bishop T.D. Jakes and you'll find out the first 10 years of his pastoring, he can barely get people to come. When he was in Virginia, it was called Higher D, Higher Dimensions. He can barely get people to come. He didn't really run into great prosperity until he moved to Texas. Oh, and moved to Dallas. Well, watch this. You got to know but you got to be persistent. You got to keep going on, keep going on. I'm going to keep coming on. I'm going to keep teaching. I'm going to keep being faithful. I'm going to keep writing down these plays. I'm going to keep going to the bank. I've been rejected. You got to be persistent. Study the history of uh, the guy who owned Pizza Hut. He found bankruptcy over 11 times, but now Pizza Hut's are all over the world. You got to be persistent. Though you fall seven times, rise up. In order to be a leader, you got to have courage, and you got to have courage to be persistent. We first started out in my father's house. Very few men was coming on, but we still come on in my father's house because we got to be persistent. You got to be persistent and consistent. Woo! God, I feel the Holy Ghost. This is required out of leadership. You can't quit because you don't see no results. Listen, when you plant an apple seed in the ground, it takes almost 20 years for a tree to grow. Oh, because guess what? Most of the time, you're trying to grow roots before people see roots. In leadership, people get upset when they don't see roots of fruit, but you trying to conquer what's below you, you trying to conquer what's unseen before you can get fruit from what is seen. Roots are not seen, but fruit is seen. Don't leave before the miracle happens. You got to be persistent. I'm speaking to somebody today. You got to keep going. Ain't nobody calling. Ain't nobody coming in. I don't care if they ain't calling. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I ain't going to be able to finish this today. Listen, listen. When I was at my grandfather's church, sometimes he would have me preach and I tell you, it wasn't but one or two people. And one time I was going to preach and it was one person in the audience, one person in the audience. And I looked at my granddad. And I said, why do you want me to preach? We need to shut church down. Ain't nobody out here, but there's one lady and she falling asleep. She falling asleep and she's the only one here. And my grandfather said to me, boy, it's packed in here. I said, it's not packed, granddaddy. He said, you don't see all these angels. He said, you got to learn how to preach to the angels. He said, you got to learn how to preach to the unseen. He said, when you can preach to the invisible, when the visible come in, it's easy. You got to be persistent even when you don't see nothing. You got to know that it's in the ground even when you don't see no fruit on the, on the tree. You can't find a flower nowhere. But the longer you keep going, one day something going to sprout up. One day somebody going to come on. All of a sudden now somebody going to show up. Somebody going to sit there. God going to send some people with you. But you got to be persistent. Every leader have to have at least three things. You have to be encouraged. You have to have courage. You have to be persistent. And you have to have God's faith for others. Now don't forget this last thing. God faith. For, I got faith for others. I got faith for others. I got faith for others to the point that I'll speak to Lazarus on your behalf. Because I got faith for I got faith for others. That I got faith that you're gonna get the building. I got faith that you're gonna work in the ministry. I got faith that you're gonna open up that bank. I got faith that you're gonna start your own school. I got faith that you're gonna start a brand new hairline. I got faith that you're gonna open up your own movie theaters with Christian movies coming in. I got faith for others. Three things you gotta have. Why? he said, Joshua, I'm giving the land to them. You got to take them to their land. I promise it to the children of Israel. Faith for others. You'll never be a successful leader if you only have faith for yourself. Ooh. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Three things a leader must have. Courage, persistence, and God's faith for others. Next point. Moses was an empowering leader. But Joshua had to finish the task. There's some people that you were connected to to finish their work. You, oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You trying to wonder why I couldn't stay there? There's a time that God let you stay there. You saw some good things. You saw some bad things. But God is moving you into the ministry not to do something in a sense 
of, of, of brand new, but you're continuing on to what God gave them. You're finishing the work. Moses was very powerful. Moses was equipped. Moses saw God on the backside of the desert. Talk to me. Moses wrote the Ten Commandments. Moses had a veil over his face. Moses was anointed. Moses crossed his path the Red Sea, lift his rod. Moses threw a rod down and turned into a snake. Moses, Moses was able to speak to the rock and water came out. But I, even how great Moses was, he still couldn't finish the work. You got to know there's been some work that's assigned to you that how great your pastor was, how great your father was, how great your mama was, they still couldn't finish the work because it was tied to you. It was tied to you. You thought you were there for them, but you were there to see how the work needs to be completed. Woo! The task was given to Joshua. Point number two. Point number three. Moses represent a leader for the law. For the law. Can I tell you something? Now, this is hindsight. I'm going to tell you something. Moses was going to never make it into the promised land anyway. You know why? Because Moses was a leader for the law. Now, you got to hear this, leaders. There's some people that you sat under, but they were leaders for a particular reason, for a particular assignment to introduce you to a particular understanding of God in that way. You're going to pick up on where they left off and add something to it, build upon it. And so Moses was the leader of the law. The law can't take you into the promised land. Only Jesus can or grace. That's why Joshua name in the Hebrew is the name Jesus in the Greek. Joshua is symbolic of Jesus that brings us into the promised land. Law can only take us out of Egypt, but the law can never take us into the promised land. So Moses wasn't going to make it to the promised land anyway, because he was only signed to bring you to a certain level. You got to know that, okay, how great certain people were in your life. They were only assigned to bring, to bring you to a certain level. There's some things that you can do that they have not been designed to do. Oh God, we don't like this kind of teaching. That wasn't the sign. And I know you said they taught me how to know the Bible. They taught me my Greek. They didn't want to told me how to pray. They didn't want to how to receive it. But I got to know that I'm in their life to go to a level that they cannot go. And I'm going to show you Bible. I'm going to show you Bible, okay? Because you may think, well, where you get that from? Let's go to John. Let's go to John chapter 1. See? Because you... Keith, Sometimes people are so great in our life, we think they can do it all. They can't do it all. I don't care how wonderful it is. He can't do it all. He don't know it all. I don't know it all. Many times I'm called to wake up a revelation that's in you, and the revelation that's in you is a revelation I've never saw before. You got to quit trying to think that because they've been so great that you can't see something they didn't see. They're not going to see it all. Joshua is going to see something that Moses will not see or will not enter. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this. John chapter 1. Man, I done worked up a sweat. Oh, Jesus, watch this. John chapter 1, verse 17, because I want to show you something. I want to show you in the Bible that Moses' assignment was to a particular place. There's some pastors that only can take you to a certain place. There's certain bishops and apostles can only take you to a certain place. Not because they can only take you there, but because that is their assignment. They're called to do something. Watch this. John chapter 1, verse 17. What does it say? It says, for the law... For the law, for the law was given by Moses, by Moses. Moses was a lawgiver. Moses was the introducer schoolmaster to you. Moses was the one to teach you how to fast. Moses was the one going to teach you how to pray. Oh, Moses is going to give you some things, but he only going to give you some things according to the law. Oh, watch this. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Oh, did you see that? You got to start understanding the, the reason why you sat under certain people for a certain amount of time. And then when that time came, it's time for you to go. Let me tell you something. Your first grade teacher is not your, not your high, not your uh, uh, 12th grade teacher. There's some teachers who teach you how to add. Oh, then you may go to another class. They teach you how to multiply. 
But you got to understand, and most people who are teachers in your life, they still teach in first grade. You you grown now, you got kids, you went to the school with your kids, and the teacher that taught you first grade is now a teacher for your for your child. The teacher didn't move, but the student did. Uh-oh. The student moves, the teacher is still teaching math. Woo! God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You got to know it. You got to know who you're under and how far they can go. How far they can go. Watch this. Watch this. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Let's go to another one. Maybe that's not enough for you. Let's go to Luke. Oh, God, I thank you for your spirit. Move, God, in the name of Jesus in our lives. Show us how to be a leader, how to transition. Watch this. Luke 16, 16. <clears throat> we in Luke chapter 16, verse 16. We just coming on, hit that share button. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 16, chapter 16 of Luke. The law and the prophets were until John. The law and the prophets was until John. Why? John is the forerunner of Jesus. What is Jesus coming? Jesus preaching grace and truth. And Jesus is saying, repent for the kingdom is at hand. Prior to Jesus, the kingdom message was only in shadows, but not in total substance. So they, the law had to come up until Jesus. When Jesus came, and since John the Baptist was a forerunner of Jesus, John the Baptist is really the transition. He's really the midnight hour. Uh, uh, there's a part of him that's part of, of, of the old day. There's another part of him that's introducing the new day. At 12 midnight, he's ending one day, but he's also about to introduce another day. This is John the Baptist. And so John the Baptist, until John, the the prophet, watch this, watch this, the prophet, oh God, the law in the prophets was until John, because kingdom is coming in, oh grace is coming in, truth as a person is coming in, and so there's certain people that lead you to a certain level so you can get to the next place in God, Woo! he says, for the law in the prophets was until John, since that the time, the kingdom of God. Since that time, since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man passed into it. You got to go through the law into grace. God didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. But you got to understand the law in order for it to be fulfilled. You got to understand certain people in your life you couldn't figure out. There are times in your life when it's time for you to transition as a Joshua or to transition as a Timothy. And you may go to your Moses and ask them questions and they don't understand you. And one of the most difficult things as a leader, when it's time for you as Joshua to move on, that you're still trying to get Moses to approve you. There's a time when it's time for you to move on that you have to see Moses as dead. You can't go to Moses for these questions anymore. You got to go to God. You can't go to the leader anymore. And there's a time in your life that God won't allow that dead thing to speak to you. And so you feel like he don't see me. He don't understand me. I, I'm, I'm doing more. I'm asking more. I remember when I was going through that and I would ask my pastor different questions. And I knew what he was telling me was not what. God was telling me there was more than God was telling me. There was more to it, but I was still looking for something that was dead that God says it's time for you to move on. I still wanted it to, to see me. I wanted it to respond, but it didn't have the answers for me because it was only until, until I had to move. I had to learn how to pray in a way that he didn't teach me how to pray. There's some things I was getting that did not come from the books he recommended. There were some places in God that I've never seen him operate in before. But I knew what God was calling me. And God is calling you to some things. And sometimes you're confused because you're looking to see it in Moses and you're not going to see it. You're not going to see it. You're not going to see it because it's in you. It's in you. Oh, there's some books that I used to read that when I go back and read them now, I say to them, my God, they so carnal. It's not that the books are carnal. I'm not in that place anymore. I needed that book at that time. But until, but when I'm moving on, Moses is dead, Joshua. You got to cross over to another place. Until, watch this. This is so important, okay? So important. All right? Now watch this. 
I'm going to show you something else. We're walking through the Word today. Let's turn to Matthew 17. Matthew 17. Father, we thank you for this Word. We thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. What a word, what a word. Matthew 17, verses 1 to 5. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in the Bible. I want to show you because you have to understand this. Watch this. Matthew chapter 17. You just coming on, hit that share button and go ahead, tag some more people. Come on. Watch this. Watch this. We're going through verses 1 through 5. Watch this. Watch this. There you go. Let God write a book about you. Yes. Yes, William. There's books in you. There's songs in you. There's plays in you. There's deeper revelation. There's, there's another generation that needs to know God from where you are. Joshua, the new generation will not follow Moses' old teaching. They will not follow the old church tradi or traditions. The Joshua generation, they're different. They don't want nobody talking about them and bullying them from the pulpit. You will not control the Joshua generation. The Timothy generation will not let you take all their money. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Chapter 17. We in a book according to Matthew. After six days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brings them up into a high mountain apart. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Now, at the Mount of Transfiguration, you got Moses and Elijah. Now, as powerful as other people were in the Old Testament, why you only see Moses and Elijah? Why you don't see other people? Why don't you see Enoch, who never died but was translated? Why don't you see Enoch? Why don't you see Abraham, who was a father of faith? Why on the Mount of Transfiguration, the two people that you see is Elijah and, 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 the, and Moses? You know why? Because until John. And so what was there was the law and the prophet. And when, Jesus, I mean, when Peter saw Jesus in the middle... Of the law and the prophet, he said, should I build three churches? Should I build three tabernacles? One for Elijah, one for Moses, and one for Jesus? And then when he looked back, Elijah and Moses was gone and saved Jesus only. Uh oh, this is, this is a scripture that the apostolic tried to build Jesus only because it says save Jesus only. But I'm not dealing with that doctrine, but I'm dealing with that the whole thing was that you cannot get locked up in Elijah and get locked up in, 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 in Moses because that's the prophet and the, uh, and, 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 and the, uh, God, I'm getting, Carried away. That, that's the prophet. Watch this. Watch this. That's the prophet and the lawgiver, Moses. But guess what? You can't get caught up in that. You got to get caught up in who? Jesus. You got to understand. Don't go back to it. Woo! See? Until John. Until John. Moses, law, Elijah, prophet. The whole Old Testament is built upon the law and the prophet until how many times you are not becoming the leader you're called to be because when it's time for you to transition, you only want to operate in where you've been and not where you're going. Ooh, very key. Okay. Ah, oh, man, my time is almost out. Let me give you about three more points. Uh, no, I'm going to stop there. Because I, I don't want to rush it. Father, I bless your name for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, that you know how to make leaders out of us. How to build ministry within us. You said the kingdom of God is from within. Teach us how to look at what you called us to be. Lord, I ask you to let us know when it's time to transition. To become the Joshua that you called us to Timothy. To be authentic in who we are. To be confident. To have courage. To be strong. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name for it. All that you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for the new leadership, the changing of the guards. Help us to accept that you're with us. Help us to accept what you called us to do. No more 
trying to be connected to a dead thing that's over. A dead thing. Let us not be connected to a was. Let us be connected to a is. We want to know where you are, not where you were. Let us move when you tell us to move, and we bless you for it. Thank you, Lord, for this lesson on leadership, how to transition, how to be courageous. And we bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do not miss tomorrow. I got so many more points I'm going to talk about. I'm going to deal with the Moses. I'm going to deal with Joshua. I'm going to deal with how we see it, how you move on. All those things coming from the book uh, of Joshua. We're going to take that. And so please meet me tomorrow. Don't forget facing our journey. They have a powerful, powerful teaching coming up uh, this, I think, for the rest of this month. Uh, that they're going to be dealing with chain breaking, breaking change, coming out of change. It's, it's going to be a powerful deliverance about, you know, breaking change, how you break change. God is breaking change. They're going to be dealing with that. And so please meet them facing our journey tomorrow. Also, don't forget on Tuesday, Sister Miriam, I see she was on today, uh, the ministry called Out of the Box Ministry. Please support them. All the ministries in my father's house, thank you for coming yesterday. And those are listening, if you have not listened to yesterday's teaching, go back. It was a phenomenal teaching yesterday. We dealt with uh, who's in the house, what's in the house. My house should be called a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. So don't forget all those ministries that we tied to. But I want to say this to you. This is your time and this is your turn. You got to no longer believe that you can do it for everybody else, but you can't do it for you. God is going to, and, and we all stepping out by faith. Okay. We stepping out by faith. So meet me tomorrow, same place, same time as I do part two, leadership one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to give some powerful insights and revelation on how God calls us to be leaders and how to be effective in what God has given you. What God has given you. I love you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day.